Hey, what's going on guys? Nemesis here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be going over some replays actually. Uh, we're 7,546 trophies. We are top 543 in the world and I want to do some replays because I have some really good replays to show you guys. So please make sure to like and subscribe and let's get it. Okay, we got a first game here against Pushkin Biceps. Um, He's gonna be playing the giant graveyard deck with Skeleton King. Skeleton King is like so OP. Like, I've honestly seen so many Skeleton King decks now and so many graveyard in general. Like, that's why I'm kind of like having poison in my deck now. Because like, poison's pretty pretty solid actually, you know? So, I'm just gonna kick things off with the Zap and then Royal Ghost just to see what he is. He's gonna put the Skeleton King in the back, which is fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and cycle my Magic Archer in the back. It's always pretty nice to cycle the Magic Archer against the Skeleton Kings and stuff like that. And then kind of just feeling what exactly what he is. Um, he's going to play the Witch in the back. And then I think immediately I'm just going to go for an E-Wiz in the back just to play defense. Um, at this point, I definitely know he's Giant Graveyard because Witch is like seen in the Graveyard decks already. So much. And especially with the arrows on top of that because Giant Graveyard decks tend to care of the arrows snowball. But this guy has like Zap. He has Fireball too actually, which is pretty strange. He has like Triple Spell I think. Is he Triple Spell or? No, he's not. He actually has this Fireball arrows. Um... I, got, I played my Ghost right there, too, just because, like, he had a really bad cycle, but he had minions. Like, he showed the minions kind of late, so it's whatever. I'm just going to take a quick zap on that and reset. Um, we're going to chill in here. There's, there's a method I really like to do against this matchup, and the method I like to do is when they cycle their Witch or something, I like to, like, spam them opposite lane just due to the fact that their Witch is really the only ranged unit that can shoot, like, against your defense. So, with that being said, uh, you could just kind of overwhelm the Skeleton King at that point because the Skeleton King is just like a melee and he has to kind of get up close to your troops, but your troops can actually just TP us down if you have enough pressure. I messed up my timing there, and my P.E.K.K.A actually did not tank for the Magic Archer, which is pretty unfortunate. I took an Electro Wizard there just to make sure that that Witch was, uh, Witch was dead right there. And he's going to go for the Skeleton King ability, which is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick zap on that just to make sure that thing does not get any counter push. And he's gonna go for minions here, which is pretty interesting minions in my opinion, but it's whatever, you know. I'm gonna take the fireball here, and this is what I'm talking about. So, at this point, I knew that he was always playing the witch in the back and left lane, so I'm just gonna go for opposite lane prediction with the bandit, and I got pretty lucky there. So, with that being said, I'm just gonna completely spam him here because, like I said, he doesn't have witch anymore, and everything is going to just like pretty much overwhelm the skeleton king. Play the magic archer for the witch and stuff like that. And this is kind of where I get him in the lock a little bit. He's going to cycle the fireball, which I actually kind of mind it, you know? I mind him taking the fireballs like that. And then I'm just going to kind of keep repeating the process at this point, just completely doing this. I think I take a poison here too, I'm not too sure. Um, So I'm just going to go, yeah, there you go. There's the poison, and then this is what I'm talking about. Like, I'm just completely spamming him at this point where he can't get any more pressure off on me. And I'm just completely taking control of the game. So that's really how I like to play the matchup is the user witch to kind of go opposite lane and just start spamming him with my um, troops. He takes a pretty interesting Skeleton King ability there, but you know, he kind of has to because he's pretty much done for and yeah, that is going to be game number one. Really well played by us. Let's move on to the second game. Okay, we'll get our next game here against uh, Mini JP. This is like I am JP's mini account. So like he's like a pro player really really solid player like really good He's gonna play in the RG lightning deck with that ghost and hunter in it and stuff like that, which is You know, it's all right. Um, I'm just gonna kick things off with the band in the back You know just typical typical play with Pekka. He's gonna cycle a ghost at first You know, I was thinking that this could potentially be like Mega Knight Queen deck with the ghost in it But then he cycles the hunter and at this point I actually thought he was like um um, three musketeer, you know, I thought he was three musketeer because they will tend to also carry hunter in it. He takes the lightning, I think that was pretty aggressive, so I'm just gonna roll with the P.E.K.K.A in the back of the opposite lane right here. And he's gonna go for Electric Spirit, and actually, I still don't know exactly what he was. This is kind of already revealing that he's RG, but for some reason, I, I wasn't thinking that. I actually was thinking that he was three musketeers, so... And typically with three musketeers, they will carry an ice golem, so that's why I did that battle ram placement, just in case if you wanted to ice golem, the battle ram would push the P.E.K.K.A. to the left hand side, so the P.E.K.K.A. wouldn't get kited. And I'm just kind of putting the pressure on because he was pretty aggressive with that lightning in the beginning. 
And there we go, I'm just gonna keep pouring the pressure. And I made a little misplay here, guys. I, I made a pretty big misplay. I should have just like took in the zap immediately on top of that hunter because the hunter was getting so much value. If I just took the zap earlier, that hunter would have not gotten any of those shots on top of my barbarian. So his tower should have been at like 600 or something HP instead of like the thousand. I knew I was in a massive elixir advantage, so I'm just gonna cycle my magic archer in the back, and I still don't know what he is. Like, I still don't know he's RG, so. I'm just, since I know I have a pretty big elixir advantage, I'm just gonna put another Pekka in the back. Because he still has to respond to this uh, magic archer right there, so. He's gonna take the fisherman, really good fisherman placement. He's gonna get the king activation and stuff like that. It's pretty fine. Um, I was gonna put my electro wizard behind the Pekka, but. Uh, he played the Royal Ghost, so I kind of had to use it on the top of the Ghost. And I took the Zap, but he's protecting his Haunter really well, getting a ton of value. And we're kind of chilling here, you know. Seeing, like, see what he wants to do, playing a little bit passively. I still don't know that he's RG right now. I'm going to keep going opposite lane here. And then at this point, I think I played the Pekka on top of the Ghost, because it's a pretty solid value. And there we go, there's his RG. Um, so he's going to play this RG. I'm just going to go ahead and take the Electro Wizard, and I'm immediately just going to... Uh, Put the magic archer there on top of the hunter because i know at this point like he's he plays really really good defense so it's hard for me to get damage now and so i'm pretty much just taking any opportunity i can get to get damage on his tower i'm gonna go ahead and just overwhelm this fisherman really quick he's gonna play an e -whiz. he's gonna kite my troops and stuff like that which is totally fine at this point i know he's playing a lot of elixir so i'm just gonna sit back and play another pekka i'm gonna play the pekka next to my tower where he's trying to get damage in and make sure I build some big dueling pushes here at this point. It's really important to like get a really good rhythm and start building really big dueling pushes because it gets kind of hard for him to defend. He's going to play a Fisherman there. I'm going to play with my Magic Archer because I know one P.E.K.K.A. shot plus a Magic Archer shot on top of the Fisherman will take it out. And I'm just going to keep spamming him here. This was kind of weird. The Haunter like shot my Battle Ram instead of the, uh, instead of the Bandit, but I'm not complaining because the Bandit took the dub right there, so really good game by us let's get on to the third one okay we're gonna get our next game here against abraham from phoenix uh he's gonna be playing this like really really interesting um electro giant deck this is kind of like an off meta electro giant deck at least as far as i know it's pretty like non-meta um because it has like earthquake in it with the guards and hunter tornado or not tornado but like the hunter magic archer like i've never seen any giant decks like run those uh He's going to kick things off with like a, a Dark Prince. I'm just going to play my Electro Wizard here to see what he is. Um, we're kind of just chilling here and see what he wants to do. Um, I'm going to play my Battle Ram because it's a free Electro Wizard essentially. Um, I was sitting at 10 and everything like that. He had no troops on the field. He's going to play his guards and stuff. And guards is super hard to break through with Pekka. Like I hate guards so much. But you know what can you do, you know? You just try to, try to beat it. Uh, I'm going to put my Bandit here. And I'm going to do it on the Hunter. My, the Hunter actually gets a shot on top of my tower. I don't know if I could have made it so the Hunter wouldn't get any damage. But he's going to place Tornado there. And at this point, this is like, I don't know what deck this is. Just like some random off meta deck. Um, I'm stuck on the Magic Archer in the back here. I think, yeah, right there he takes a Magic Archer. And an Earthquake. So he's like really aggressive there. But since I knew he was super aggressive and he still needed to play for the Ghost, I cycled my Pekka in the back here. Hoping I could get a really, really massive push off on him. I'm immediately going to take my Electro Wither 2 right behind there. Just because I didn't want the Dark Prince to charge on top of the P.E.K.K.A. And a P.E.K.K.A. E with push is generally just like a really nice push to have. And so, yeah. He's going to play the Cannon here. And then this is where it's like, man, like, what's going on? Like, what deck is this? So it's like, play, or he plays the guards as well. And it's like, alright, it's whatever. So I'm just going to let that push go. And just kind of reset here. See what he wants to do. Go ahead and play the bandit in the back. Um, it's really important these kind of mashups that like you gotta like out cycle them a lot. You know you gotta really have be super aggressive to kind of uh, get them in a bad cycle and just kind of take advantage of it to maximize your damage. Um, at this point, I think I'm just gonna play the royal ghost here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna play the royal ghost here on top of the dark prince, and he, he's really aggressive with these magic archers too. It's like crazy. Um. Let's see here. I'm just gonna put my bandage just to chill out and see what he wants to do. And then I played my Pekka again because I didn't know he's Electro Giant, you know? I still don't know he's E Giant. I think I thought it was just like an Earthquake Magic Archer like chip deck or something like that. So I'm trying to build like big single lane pushes. Because I think it's typically against guard decks, I kinda want to like single lane so I can get as much poison value as possible. 
and I play that poison really low just due to the fact that if he wanted to play guards, he's gonna play it into the poison, so that's kind of like right there. Uh, that's why I did that. Take the zap on top, and we're kind of just resetting again. Not really seeing any success, but I'm gonna keep pushing it. Playing the band in the back, he plays an earthquake, so I'm just gonna take a P.E.K.K.A. And I think this is the time where he plays his Electro Giant, which is like, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna put my E-Wiz right there. I'm not gonna play it on top, obviously, because it's just a bad play. Um, he plays a Magic Archer there. I'm gonna play my Royal Ghost. He does a really good NATO, pulling everything into like the Electro Giant. And at this point, I kind of just lost, but we're chilling, you know, trying to DPS this down as much as I can. He protects his cannon really well with the guards. And kind of just seeing our opening, trying to find our opening right now. Um, he's playing really well with good defense. It's kind of hard to break through the guards, Dark Prince cannon, and stuff like that. I think I'm going to play my Electro Wizard pretty high because I didn't want that Dark Prince to get a charge on top of my Battle Ram. He plays a pretty cool Tornado, pulling my Electro Wizard to the opposite side lane. And I think I'm going to take a Zap here, and there goes another aggressive Magic Archer. So it's like, man, like, he's not, like, letting up with these Magic Archers. So I'm going to play my, my Bandit right there. He's going to play his guards, which is fine. Play my Magic Archer to snipe away. He's going to play a really good Dark Prince. Uh, it's going to jump over the river to take out my... Magic Archer. I really wasn't thinking about that play, but really good play on his end. And this is like Triple Elixir. The game is super close right now, so what I'm trying to do now is just Poison Cycle him. Kind of just seeing who spells out each other first at this point. And uh, yeah, so that's my goal right now. He's going to put the Hunter on the opposite side lane. Play my Magic Archer back there because it was a little bit higher in health, so I didn't want it to give him more like Earthquake value. Put my Electro Wizard down low. Play a Pekka on top. And this is a pretty solid push. I'm really going to pressure with my... Um, Bandit there just because I had a magic archer and and um, I didn't want him to get like too over aggressive where he could just completely like push me and I'm gonna play my battle ram there because he didn't have cannon in cycle take a poison because I need to win the grind game right now making sure that he doesn't earthquake me out and magic archer does get a couple shots right there he's gonna play his guards to protect his uh, magic archer so I'm just gonna take a quick ghost plus an electro wizard to clean that push up really nicely and super happy to walk away with that though so Let's go on to the, the fourth game. Okay, we've got a final game here against I'm Nilo um, from IR Luxury. Um, let's see what he's going to do here. Kind of just chilling. We've got the P.E.K.K.A. Battle Ram Electro Wizard Ghost. He kicks things all with bats, so it could still be anything. It could be like minor wall breakers or something like that. But he plays the pump. And as soon as he plays the pump, I immediately knew, like, man, this is definitely 3M already. 3M Giant. Because this is, like, the only thing, like, bats pump is in, so... Play the battle ram opposite lane and stuff like that. He's gonna go for the three musketeers, and I got a really good poison off on this one. I took the poison on double musketeered with the pump, so really solid by us. Uh, let's see what he's gonna do here. I believe he's gonna play the battle ram in front of that musketeer, which is pretty nice by him. I didn't want to cycle the Pekka because I know he has giant, so I try to play a nice defense. I think I should have played that magic archer, it's like one tile to the left or something, because I think that would have started splashing on top of the musketeer. But yeah, I'm trying to save the, the Pekka in hand for the giant, stuff like that. And at this point, I get super aggressive because I know his hand is literally only pets and minion horde. I know this deck runs minion horde, so I'm just going to completely just spam him here and like take his tower. And there he goes for the giant at the bridge opposite the lane, which is fine. I'm just going to put my Electro Wizard low. And if he wanted to play bats or something, I would just um, go for a zap or something like that. He's going to play the minion horde, so I'm just going to take the zap on the minion horde instead. And we're straight vibing right now. We got a really good damage lead. He does have some good damage on both sides, but I was really confident that, like, with a good cycle management, that we could definitely just defend his pushes and stuff like that. So we're chilling here. I think I'm going to play, like, the bandit at the bridge, just because I knew his cycle, and he had a really bad cycle. So he's going to pump, and he's also going to do that. I think I'm just going to take the poison as well. On top of that, just to get it out the way, I don't want to deal with pumps. I don't want him to get, like, massive elixir advantages. So yeah, that's why I did that. He's gonna play the battle ram, and I'm gonna play the ghost kind of late, just because I wanted the barbarian to lock onto the ghost and stuff like that. And we're straight vibing right now. So let's see what he wants to do here. So he's gonna go double musketeers opposite or the right side lane. I'm just gonna go for the peck on the back. And at this point, I know he's gonna go for giant and stuff like that. And there's nothing I can do. There's literally nothing I can do to defend the left side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that go, and I'm just gonna focus on right side defense right now. Let's completely let that go. Um, obviously I'm not going to try to get 3 kind, you know, so I'm going to play my Magic Archer right there so it could kind of snipe away at uh, all the goblins and stuff like that, and all his, like, all his squishy units, so we're chilling here, make sure they don't get 3 crowned. 
And I think we're going to play the Pekka in front of that too, just because if you wanted to go for a, uh, a Giant at the bridge or something, I got the Pekka on hand, and immediately just take the Poison, because that is such a good Poison value. So, I played that like super well, and then my Bandit and Ghost just take his tower, so really, really good game by us. I think next video, I'm definitely going to do like a live video, so thank you guys so much for watching, and catch you guys next time.